Strider was originally an action game made by Capcom, circa 1989. It was an amazing early action game. It's best known as the Sega Genesis game that made SNES owners green with envy. It combined amazing action, ninjas, and sci-fi. Despite the fact that it was originally an 80s game, it dripped with 90s over-the-top cheese, action, and awesomeness. Strider was a prime franchise that never got the right treatment. It didn't get a sequel till late 1999, and didn't see a console port of that sequel until late 2000 on the original PlayStation. Strider 2 suffered from timing that was worse than Metroid Prime 2 releasing before Halo 2 and Xbox Live. Fifteen years later, and the dawn of a new era of gaming is here. Capcom wanted to snag some nostalgia for a franchise and character kept alive and relevant only through his crossovers in the Marvel vs. Capcom series, where he is known as the Ultimate Glass Cannon. Strider follows the events of Strider Hiryu, and that's about it. Keep in mind it's a remake of an arcade game after all. As such, its focus is on its action, and it does it well. Your primary weapon is a lightning-fast laser blade. This blade is completely merciless, as it can be swung as fast as you can tap the attack button. In the beginning, it's borderline unfair as any gamer with a rapid thumb easily turns it into a lawnmower of death. The game character pacing is uneven, however, as you feel empowered until you finish the boss battle, and then run into roadblocks which you can't overcome. While uneven, it does provide you with a strong sense of progression. This is 2014 after all, and three lives and a left to right mission structure has not been in vogue for about 20 years now. Strider is a full on Metroidvania experience. Hidden collectibles abound, and backtracking with newfound abilities never gets boring because of the excellent animation and sound effects. Everything you do in Strider can be described with a few seconds of a swing of his sword. Very fast and very satisfying. The graphics, however, point out some unusual flaws in the game design. It has some sharp sound design and excellent animation in-game, but everything else is a boring mass of futuristic industrial gray. This design does lend itself to keep the focus on Strider and his helpless victims are being sliced in twain, but this boring design also flows over into the bosses, who have no animation in their generic faces. In the end, it does give it a bit of an aged look that it's really easy to overlook. Whether this was intended as a nod to its classic roots or not, it still works. Yes, Strider may have finally found his stride for mainstream success. Hitting at a dry time in the release calendar on systems that desperately need some new games. Yes, he does have the benefit of being both nostalgic and released with little competition, but that doesn't mean you shouldn't give Strider a try. Double Helix did an excellent job in this Metroidvania-style remake of a classic game. I look forward to the next installment, and here's hoping it comes soon. Strider is currently available for $15 on all current Microsoft and Sony consoles. I would say give this game a try. It's cheap, fun, and well worth your time. Thanks for watching. Hey, if you like what you saw, make sure to follow us on Tumblr, Twitch, and Facebook. The links are in the annotations. And as always, please subscribe.